All right, this video for uh, transitional math for assignment number 12, and it covers health insurance. Um, we're going to talk about different types of health insurance, and and, uh, and it's just real basic stuff, um, so just so that you have a basic idea of what health insurance is and what you need to know about health insurance a little bit, what you need to know, but it's very, very basic. Uh, health insurance provides fi financial protection against overwhelming medical expenses. So if you have an accident or illness or something, um, so that you don't have to pay all those bills yourself because hospital bills and doctor bills are very, very expensive. You carry medical insurance, uh, just like automobile insurance, if something happens, if you have an accident uh, with an automobile, um, same idea, uh, and you probably had some kind of medical insurance on, or you probably had some kind of medical insurance on your automobile coverage also that we, when we talked about that. Uh, it's, you really need to have some kind of medical insurance just in case something happens and it's sort of, it's really expensive now and it's getting more expensive. Uh, as we go, there are several different types of plans. The first one here is the traditional plan. Traditional plan offers health care coverage where the health care provider is paid a predetermined dollar amount for the service uh, given. So your health care provider is paid some predetermined amount for a doctor visit or whatever. Uh, that's a traditional plan. There's not, I don't think, and I'm not an expert at this by any means, but I don't think that you see a whole lot of traditional plans anymore. Most of them uh, have gone to some of these other plans that we're going to talk about. And with a traditional plan, this is set up and you can use any health care provider that, that you want to use. So you can, you can go to any doctor or anything like that. And again, I don't think that there's many of these traditional plans left anymore uh, because they want to, the doctors, you, you sort of have to set up what doctor you're going to go to. That's going to be on these other plans. A preferred provider organization is a PPO. That's a group of selected health care providers who offer comprehensive services at preset reimbursement levels. So a PPO is where you have through your insurance policy you have some group of like doctors or surgeons or hospitals or you, you have some group uh, that is all in that network and you have to make sure that when you go to the doctor or you go to uh, some hospital that they are in your network. If they are outside of the network, then there may be a partial coverage, but a lot of times there's no coverage. Uh, my son here a few years ago fell and, and uh, sliced open his face pretty good and he had to go to the, had to be rushed to the emergency room and the, the hospital that we took him to was in our network, then that hospital called in a surgeon, a plastic surgeon, to work on him. And it was like midnight, one o'clock in the morning. And that surgeon happened not to be in our network. And we had to completely and totally pay the surgeon's bill. So a PPO, 
there's a certain group of doctors and so on, and those are your care providers, your health care providers, and they, they have preset uh, levels that they get paid at for any certain thing. And so that, that's a, a PPO plan. An HMO, a health maintenance organization, is a prepaid health plan in which care providers contract with employees of the HMO to provide you with services. So in this plan, an HMO, health maintenance organization, you pick a primary, like a primary doctor, primary physician that you go to, and then the insurance company and then set up a set, uh, a set amount that they pay for certain services. And then that primary doctor uh, can say, okay, you need to go to some specialist or whatever, and they'll, they'll refer you to them. So you got PPOs, you got HMOs, and uh, everything's changing. So you've got to make sure that you go in and you really look at the plan um, when, when you're trying to decide on a health care providers or what kind of setup you're getting into. One other one, again, the traditional plan, I, I'm not sure if they're, if you can even get those anymore. Most places now have PPOs, HMOs. Uh, another thing that is set up or is used now is a HSA, which is a health savings account. So you may have heard some of the teachers uh, here at National Trail talking about that last year. Um, they were setting up health savings account. And what it is is because the cost of medical insurance and stuff is getting so high that instead of paying all those higher premiums, you actually set up a savings account so that, especially if you're younger, uh, where you're not spending a whole lot going to the doctor, then you set up a savings account and you have that money in a savings account so that you can pay off or pay for your, your medical expenses <clears throat> instead of paying real high premiums. Now that doesn't mean you don't still pay uh, a premium. It's just not quite as high as a normal premium. So if that's just a, a another way to try to set up something to cut down on the, the high cost of medical uh, medical insurance. Uh, premium, a premium, don't forget, is an amount to be paid for an insurance policy. Uh, premiums, we talked about premiums with car insurance and, and uh, other things. Same thing with medical insurance, amount to be paid for the policy. Uh, it could be you know, you could have a monthly premium, a yearly premium, a semi-yearly premium, weekly premium, so on, so on. Um, usually you'll have a premium and it'll be yearly, and then you'll pay it in certain set uh, periods, or at certain set periods. Uh, these things, we've talked about these things all year long, just to refresh your memory here, annual is once a year. So if you made a premium payment annually, then you pay that premium off in one big lump sum. Semi-annual is twice a year or every six months. So you make two payments per year. Uh, quarterly is four times a year or every three months. So you make four payments. Um, usually with health insurance and with auto insurance and the different insurances. Uh, usually we don't pay them annually. Usually if you do pay them annually, then there's usually a, you get a better price. So you might pay if you have, if your uh, medical insurance is a thousand dollars per year, 
which that's very, very low. I'm just making up a number here. If you pay it annually, then you pay the thousand dollars. If you pay it semi-annually, then there's going to be fees added onto there for them happen, uh, having to do the paperwork and stuff. So the, the fewer payments that you make, probably the less you're going to pay in fees and other charges. Um, but usually there's not a whole lot you can do about that, especially with medical insurance. Uh, most people can't just pay it off annually. Uh, so most of the time, if we're doing medical insurance, it'll be one of these that we do. And a lot of the time, it'll be one of these uh, last three here because it'll just be taken out of your check or to be deducted. If you have medical insurance through your job or whatever, then it will be deducted from uh, your check each time you get paid. Uh, going on down through here, monthly is once per month. So if you get paid once a month, 12 times a year, uh, then your premium would come out of that monthly check. Semi-monthly is twice per month. That's what I get paid here, National Trail, which is 24. That means I get paid 24 times a year. Weekly, you get paid every week. If you get a check uh, every week, then there'll be 52 pays per year. Bi-weekly, semi-monthly, and bi-weekly are the ones that everybody gets confused. Semi-monthly, there's 24 pays in a year. Bi-weekly, you get paid uh, once every two weeks, but that means that there's, since there's 52 weeks in a year, there's 26 uh, pays per year. Uh, a couple of formulas that we're going to use. When, let's go back for a second. When you pay your premium, if you're if you're not just paying it yourself, if you're uh, if you have a job and they pay part of your premium, usually the employer will pay a certain percentage and then you pay a certain uh, employee you can't spell the employer pays a certain percentage then you pay a certain percentage it used to be that the employer would pay something like 75 to 80 percent and then you would pay whatever's left over out of the hundred percent now it's more uh, a lot of employers have gone to now it's it's closer to 50 50 or something along those lines it's different for every job and that's something you need to look at when you uh, when you get a job is what rate do they pay at so you know a, a lot of companies now might be the employer pays 60 percent and you pay 40 percent of the annual premium So that's one of those things that you got to look at uh, when you get a job is what percentage of the health care premium does the employer pay? What percentage do you pay? Uh, a lot of employers, uh, when we had Obamacare and stuff like that, a lot of employers went to where they didn't pay any of the premium anymore. They said, all right, you can get it through something else then we don't have to pay it anymore. So I, I don't know, uh, I, I know what we have here at National Trail, but I don't know what every, you know, every other business or every other job, how they have it set up. You'd have to check on that for each one. Normally they pay a certain percentage and you pay a certain percentage. Uh, the employer's percentage, or the employee's percentage, sorry, is just 100% minus the employer's percentage. So if the empl uh, employer pays 80%, then you do 100 minus 80, and that means you'd have to pay 20% of the premium. The employee's contribution, take the total premium times your percentage. So if the total premium was $2,000, you 
take that times your, if it was 20% that you had to pay, take that times the 0 0.20, remember change the percent to a decimal, and that's how much you're gonna have to pay. Now, once we have that, once we have the employee's contribution, the other thing that you're gonna have to do with that is uh, this, you might have to decide how much am I paying per week, how much am I paying per month, how much am I paying uh, semi-monthly, so on, so on, so on. Right on this example, Dorsey Williams has a single plan. His PPO annual premium is $4,325. So that's per year. Uh, if you can find health insurance, even for a single person at $4,325 per year, you better grab a hold of it. Um, our book's sort of old, so this is, it's not rolled, but this, that premium is pretty low compared to uh, what things are actually today. Uh, his employer pays 65%. How, how much does Dorsey pay annually? How much does his employer pay annually? And what is taken out of Dorsey's, uh, Dorsey's check if he is paid bi-weekly? So the first thing we're gonna do, we take 100% minus 65. That gives us 35. That means Dorsey pays 35% of the annual premium. So we're just gonna take 4,325 and we're gonna times it by 0.35. Grab your calculator and do that. So 4,325 times 0.35 and we end up with $1,513.75. That's how much Dorsey pays per year. So that's one of our answers. That's how much he pays annually. The next thing they ask us is how much the employer pays annually. A couple different ways we could do this. We could just take the 4,325 and times it by the 65% that the employer pays. Or we could just take this number and subtract it from the 4,325. Either way, it should give us the same answer. Uh, 4,325 times 0.65 and I end up with $2,811.25. That's what the employer pays. And if you add those two together, it should come up to that total there. I'm not gonna try it, but it should. Then the last thing, so Dorsey knows that he's paying this much for the entire year, but he doesn't make entire yearly payments, the money's taken out of his check, uh, and he gets paid bi-weekly. So we wanna figure out how much is taken out of each check uh, when Dorsey gets it for his medical insurance. If we go back here and we look at bi-weekly, bi-weekly once per two weeks, so that means 26 pays per year, or 26 times per year. So we're gonna take this number, 13.75, and we're gonna divide it by, so there's 26 pays per year, then we're gonna divide by 26. So you just take that number, 15.13.75, divided by 26, and you end up with $58 and about 22 cents. So that's how much is taken out of each check. And you'll notice it didn't come out even, so they may round it up to like $58.23. And then one of the checks, maybe they'll take out less uh, to at the end to just even everything up. So this is 
Dorsey's annual amount that he pays, how much he pays per check, and this is the total amount or the total premium for the entire year of medical insurance. Next one, Ruby Shaw has a family plan. Her HMO annual premium is eleven thousand four hundred seventy-three dollars. Uh, should say her employer pays seventy-three percent. How much does Ruby pay annually? How much does her employer pay annually? What is taken out of Ruby's check if she is paid semi-monthly? So same idea here, and. I, I, I'm going to do it a different way this time. First, I'm going to figure out how much the employer pays. That's $11,473 times the 0.73. So if I grab my calculator and I do that, $11,473 times 0.73. That's $8,375.29. That's how much the employer pays. To figure out how much Ruby pays, she pays 27%, but the other thing that we could do is we could just take the 11,473 and we could subtract off the $8,375.29 that the employer pays. And that's gonna tell us how much she pays per year. So if I just punch that in my calculator, come up with $3,097.71. That's how much Ruby pays. Then if Ruby gets paid semi-monthly, if I go back, wrong way. I go back here semi-monthly, twice per month, that means 24 pays per year. So we're gonna divide that number that we got by 24. So we take this $3,097.71 and we divide it by 24. That's gonna tell us how much is taken out of Ruby's check each time. Three zero. 97.71 divided by 24 and I end up with about $129 and seven cents. And these numbers that we're coming up with, I get paid semi-monthly, $129. I'm closer to uh, 200, it's 200 and some dollars that they take out of my check. So these numbers are sort of low in relationship to today's health insurance uh, setup. Some other things with health insurance and deductible. Deductible is the amount of money you must pay each year before your insurance company starts to pay. Uh, a lot of things have like $4,000 deductible. So no matter what, you pay the first $4,000, then your insurance company starts to make payments for whatever. Uh, they might pay everything after that first $4,000. They might only pay a certain percentage or whatever after that $4,000. But a deductible is what you have to pay first before they start paying. Co-insurance and co-payments. First, I'm going to talk about a copayment. Copayment, a lot of times, if you visit a doctor, you'll have a copayment, and it might be like $20. So every time you go to the doctor, you pay them $20, uh, some flat fee, and then the insurance company picks up whatever else. Usually, a doctor's visit right now might be $100, $150 for just a normal doctor visit. So you pay $20 and then the insurance company pays the rest. That's a copayment. Um, you might have copayments on stuff like your, uh, on any kind of 
drugs that you have to get from a pharmacy. You go in and you, you may have to just make a set a flat fee co-payment for your your whatever medicine you're picking up. Co-insurance uh, requires you to pay either a set amount or a set percentage. A lot of times it's that percentage of the medical expense. So that's something like if you go to the emergency room and the emergency room visit is four or five hundred dollars, let's say, just something easy, it may be in your policy that you pay 30% of that and the insurance company pays 70%. But it's a, a set percentage or a set amount that you pay for that certain medical expense, whatever it happens to be. Um, then a, there's a list if you go on to an insurance company's, uh, once you get a policy, if you go onto their website or whatever, you can see that they'll have listed out all the different things. So that's co-insurance, where you pay a certain, a certain rate or a certain percent of whatever you're having done. This is a chart. On this chart, it shows different things. Uh, you have single plans. So if you're not married, you don't have any kids, you could have a single plan, family plan. Sorry about that. I've got to remember not to write on this. Uh, and then it shows different, different setups as far as all the different things that you could have. You will use this chart on some of the uh, homework problems. Um, you got hospital charges. Well, first, if we look here, you have a, your network. What that means by network is the doctors or surgeons or physicians or whatever it is that are in your certain network in your uh, that are dealt with as uh, or inside your health care provider plan and then non-network people non-network doctors so if you go to a different doctor you got some doctor that you like better uh, for whatever reason you go to them, and then sometimes they'll be set up where if you use outside of the network, then you pay that little extra for using that physician. Uh, just a physician visit. This is a normal thing here. You go and your co-payment is $20. If it's, you see if it's outside the network, then the co-payment might be $30. It very well could be more than that, but this is the chart that we have for this setup. Uh, stuff like physical therapy here, you see that uh, what you do is you pay 20% of whatever the cost is. If it's out of network, if it's not one of the physicians that your insurance company contracts with, then you got to pay 30% of the visit. For the pharmacy stuff, generic drugs, you pay a $10 copayment. If it's a brand name drug, you pay a $20 copayment. Mail order stuff, uh, a lot of pharmacy stuff now is by mail, mail order, which I don't know that I really suggest, but a lot of people say that it's okay. Um, that's gotta be something you gotta look into and make decisions on for yourself. Um, generic $25 copay, brand name $50 copay, and a lot of these aren't, aren't good measuring sticks for what we actually have in place today on this chart because our book's a little older and things need to be updated, so you might pay a whole lot more than that. Uh, some things with the pharmacy stuff you need to check into <clears throat> a lot of the pharmacies will have like their uh it's called uh, one of them's rx something where they'll give you a special price if you're part of their group so if you join their group like kroger has 
their own thing for their pharmacy. If you join their group, you get special prices on things. So that's something you need to look into so you don't pay the higher uh, drug prices, the higher pharmacy prices. Emergency room visits. I know this one's way off now. Uh, you can't go to an emergency room and pay $100. Um, it's a lot more than that. An ambulance ride is extremely expensive. Um, if any of you ever had to, or knew anybody that had to take a care flight, that's really, really expensive. So all that stuff. Uh, I know somebody who, as far as the ambulance ride goes, um, one person here a couple years ago was being shipped from one hospital to another and they were going to send them in an ambulance and it was going to cost them about seven thousand dollars for them to drive them in the ambulance from one hospital to the other and the person said no i'll just have my wife or whatever drive me to that other hospital which they didn't too much like but it was a whole lot cheaper than, than the ambulance so this, we're going to use this chart on some of the problems. Uh, one formula, the amount paid by the patient, that's you. you. got your deductible, however much you have to pay in your deductible. Any co-payments that you have, any co-insurance amount that you have, any hospital charges that you have. All you're doing is adding all this stuff up to get the amount paid. So that's all you're going to do to, to get the amount paid. I got this chart here. I just put it on here again so I could use it. All right, I'm going to go through and do this. It says determine your network plan cost with the following co-payments. Seven physician visits. This is using this chart, and I'm not going to keep jumping back to this chart. I'm just going to use the one that I have laying here. Uh, but that's the chart that you'd have to use. I'll hook a copy of this chart to the assignment and everything. It'll be there on Moodle. So you got seven physician visits. Uh, two specialist visit, visits, 12 physical therapy appointments at $90 each. You also have the following pharmacy charges, two local generic drugs, one local brand name, so on and so on. Uh, notice it says your network plan costs. So they're saying that all of these are in our network. So if we look at the physician visit, it's $20 each. So we're going to take 7 times 20 there. The specialist looking at the chart, it's $30. So we're going to take 2 times 30 there. Physical therapy, uh, physical therapy says you pay 20%. So you had 12 physical therapy, so we're going to take 12 times 90 and then times the 20 percent. Uh, you also have two local generic drugs. Uh, local generic drugs were ten dollars. So they're in network. So ten dollars each. So that's two times ten. And then one local brand name drug. And that was twenty dollars. So that's times twenty there. Three mail order generic drugs. On the chart, it tells us that those generic drugs were $25 or your copay was $25. One mail order brand name drug, uh, which is $50. Uh, you have no hospital charges and no deductible, so we're not worried about the deductible. We're just going to take each one of these and then we're going to add them all up. So seven times. 120 is $140 that you paid for your uh, visits to the doctor. Two times 30 is 60. On this, if you grab your calculator and you do 12 times 90 times 20%, 12 times 90 times 0 0.20, that gives us $216 that you paid for the physical therapy here. Uh, you also had the following ph pharmacy charges, 2 times 10 for the local drugs, so that's $20. 1 times 20 for the brand name drugs, so that's another $20. 3 times 25, so that's $75. And then 1 times 50, so that's another $50. And we're going to add all those up. 
So we get, if we add them all up, we get $581. So you pay $581 and that's again, without any of your, if you happen to have a deductible, which the deductible more comes into play when you have hospital charges or something, your co-pays and other things take care of just regular doctor visits and uh, any kind of specialist visits sometimes, or most of the time, not all the time, but some of the time. So, and some of the times these specialist vi visits, you gotta be careful because if your doctor doesn't suggest that you go do it and you just go do it on your own, then the insurance company won't cover it. You have to have, uh, be recommended by your doctor to go do that. Next example here, determine a family's network plan cost uh, with the following co-payments. You got 22 physician visits. So if it's in network and we got 22 physician visits and that means 22 times, uh, let's see on our chart in network was $20 plus uh, 12 specialist visits. So that's 12 times looking at our chart, it's $30 for each visit. 15 physical therapy appointments at $80. So we're going to take 15 times 80 times, uh, make sure that these are all in network times 20%. So we got, we're going to have to do that first and then we'll add it to the other stuff. And then it says, one emergency room visit plus the ambulance fee. So we looked at our chart here for emergency room, it's $100, ambulance fee, it's another $100. So plus 100, plus 100. Uh, then it says, the family also had the following pharmacy charges, nine local generic drugs. So that's gonna be plus nine times for local generic, it was $10 each, plus four local brand name drugs. So that's four times, if we look at our chart again, the brand name were $20 each, plus six mail order generic. So that's six times 25, plus two mail order brand name, uh, which was two times 50. I'm just gonna write in a hundred there. Could have probably done some of this in our head. There was also a hospital charge of $9,260. And the family has already uh, met its annual deductible. So it's already paid all of its deductible. That's what it's telling you there. They've already met all their annual deductible, but on the chart, it says that uh, for all hospital visits, we pay 10% as long as it's in network. So this is gonna be plus 0.10 times the 9,260. And if I do all that, all on my calculator. I come up with $2,586. So that's what they're paying. But then when we look back at the chart for this deductible, they, their annual deductible was $3,000. So I'm gonna add that to that. That's This is the total money out of pocket for this family. So it ends up being $5,586. It says it on the chart, What that, that's what 
I had to stop for a minute and look at and see what their deductible was for a family plan. It was three uh, three thousand dollar annual deductible. So five thousand five hundred eighty six dollars is what they end up paying out of pocket. All right, the assignment. The assignments, these two pages. Just send me a picture of it when you get it completed. If you have any questions, feel free to give me a call or send me an email or whatever. 